Shalom Aleichem, welcome to Eretz Yisrael, Erev Shabbat Kodesh, Parshat Tzav, and it's Yerushal- in Yerushalayim right now, it's still Purim, and I've been through the, a few of those Purim into Shabbat uh, transitions, they're, they're pretty interesting, you won't see them anywhere but in Jerusalem on Shabbat, and it's an uh, 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 interesting thought to think about that other places in the world, Jews are keeping Shushan Purim, and we're not out here, you know, outside of Jerusalem. It's an interesting thought that there are some Jews celebrating something, and elsewhere Jews aren't celebrating. And that, when I first thought that, it kind of disturbed me a little bit. That aren't we all supposed to be celebrating together? And the Megillah goes to great efforts great efforts to keep emphasizing the 127 Medinot Melech Achashverosh, the 127 nations of the King Achashverosh and the Jews are Mifurazar, Mifuraz, Mifuzar, Mifurad. They're spread out, they're, they're separated from everybody else. And, you know, there was a time where there was no Purim. And then, the story happened, and it was, you know, a touch-and-go story. People's lives were on the line, and suddenly everything changed. And only a year later did the rabbis create, from the event, a holiday. Now, imagine yourself being there. Where would you go? What would you do? Who would you turn to? No mass communications. The only people you can turn to are you know, your family or your neighbors. Or maybe, if you're lucky, some government official rides by in a carriage. You're kind of locked in the world. Alone in your space, not knowing which way to turn. Well, a very interesting parallel idea. If you were God, and it was only you, God before creation, God before this world, as Rabbi Nachman emphasizes in Torah 52 over and over, before creation and after creation, before creation, everything is potential, and after creation, when people do God's will, they go from being a temporary or potential reality into a necessary reality. And necessary means means God is obligated to continue creation by the virtue of people doing his will. And so imagine though, because in the book of creation, Sefi Yitzira, it the beginning chapters actually describe to us the creation of the parameters of consciousness. Now that's a nice big sounding sentence, right? The creations of the parameters of of consciousness. You know, when you're infinite and you're eternal, there's nothing stopping you. There's no boundaries. There's no categories. There's no fences. There's no screens. There's no vessels. It's just you and your infinite light. Might that get a little bit lonely? People say, Has for Shalom, God doesn't get lonely. But we know God wanted to give of his goodness to something that could recognize him. And then everything from that moment onward was the, embedded in the creation of Adam that could have a one-on-one relationship with the creator. And so if we sit in the beginning of time, in the beginning of creation, how do you start creating vessels from your infinity? Well, you have to constrict yourself. You have to make yourself smaller and smaller and denser and denser until your light becomes matter. Right? Sound familiar? And the light, when it becomes matter, becomes a vessel to hold more light. And so too creation begins the desire to give, the desire to receive, as the Balasulam describes, 
But the Sefer Yetzira is starts out with a a different per, creation paradigm. It begins with the idea of depth, a depth of kindness, a, a depth of strength, a depth of light, of darkness, of truth, of falsehood. He creates all these continuums of ideas. Because the minute you create an idea, you create its equal and opposite in potential. You create the potential. The minute I say, it's dark in here, your mind automatically goes to light. Because that's where our minds work. We work off this, it's like a parallel system that are bouncing off each other an idea, and you're always turning it over from opposite to opposite to opposite, and you're refining the way you think as you do that. And Shabbat comes along and says, wait, wait, God, you have to stop creation. <laughs> you have to stop. What do you mean I have to stop? Because if you don't stop, man won't be able to be the being that you created him to be. Because you created man with boundaries. So you see, God has boundaries. What are God's boundaries? His desire to give to man. His desire to show his love and his kingship and his true power. But he can only do it if he limits his power. And that's why we define a king as the one who has the power and doesn't use it. Now, if you're a politician or you're a king, then that sentence should probably be repeated a couple thousand times. The truly humble, the truly powerful are the ones who have the power of life and death in their hands and they don't use it. They don't shoot all the rockets just because they have them and send all the tanks over the innocents because they can. They hold back. They see a bit, much bigger picture. And each of us, the rabbis say, a man at his Shabbos table is like a king. You become the master of your world on Shabbat. You become the one who decides what you do. During the week, you'll notice a lot of your decisions are actually made before you get to them. Where will you go today? What will you do? Where will you work? Where will you play? Where will you eat and drink? A lot of these questions are actually answered for us by others. But on Shabbat, you get to decide all the questions and all the answers. Well, that's in a healthy family system, let's say. Now, it's not chauvinistic either because your wife is equal to you and she has the right to, to also have her will. The conflict is when we can't work that out together. However, let's not let's not talk about the conflict. That's that's weekday stuff. On Shabbat, when you're king over your realm, you start to see how precious every word can be, every story, every song, every piece of food. We start to build this storehouse of gratitude for all the things that we have. Whereas during the week, we're so busy answering the call, wherever that call is coming from, it's easy to lose sight of the appreciation. And that appreciation is actually attaching us to the original idea that God had when he created man. He saw a creature. I can create a creature that will talk to me and share with me and learn with me and do my will and argue with me and even defeat me in battle. Nitzchuni banai is the phrase in the, in the Talmud. That the voice from heaven came out and said that Rabbi Yeshua had conquered God and his Pesach din in heaven the law that was given in heaven for gluing together a broken, impure oven was not like it was in heaven as it is on earth. Rabbi Yeshua said, Lo he. The Torah is not in heaven. It's not for angels. It's for man. And if you make every effort that man makes to fix something impure, then he's not going to want to fix anything. 
And, you know, go out and try to build yourself a, a clay oven to make your bread, <laughs> to put your cholent in. It's not an easy half hour uh, opening up a cart, a box, you know, and pulling out the new pot and putting it on the stove. So, lo b'shemayim he. And we do say, though, Shabbat is in Shemayim, but not really. It's down here, too. And Shabbat, God says, be like me. Be like me. Rest. Don't do anything. Just watch. Observe. Breathe deep. Think. Wait. Listen to your listening. Look with different eyes. With appreciation, with love, with gratitude towards other people who are not like you. They're different. Everyone is different in ways that are unique. We're all the same in certain ways, but in the ways that we're unique, we're different. And Shabbat gives us that space, that time to really reset our take on life, our mindset. And, you know, if you were sitting at the beginning of creation and you had the choice to create or not to create and how to create, and what to create. Ask yourself, what would you do? What would you create? If you were the master of all masters at the beginning, when there was only you. Imagine that aloneness in the entire universe. And you might become filled with love and desire to create. And so the Sefer Yitzira is this book that is giving us a lot of information in a very small space. And every chapter deals with different areas of Kabbalah. But we're learning basically how infinity turns its light into dimensionality. Into measurable concepts. Into measurable distances and spaces and times. And how God created the tools to do the measuring like the stars and the sun and the moon and the earth. And the constellations. So, and when you can see that in your own life, then you're close, then you're close. We've got to get closer and closer until we understand that when it says God made it in his image, at that time there was no other image to be made into. And when you discover that in your own soul, you dance with joy. All our pain takes a step back, a step down the aisle, and we can be on top with joy and gratitude and love. And the pain and the disappointments of life, they become very small in the greatness of what we're here to do. God bless you all. Shabbat Shalom. We'll see you on our daily class on Patreon, on YouTube, F Facebook, Web, Yeshiva, Insight Timer. Maybe a few other places I forgot about, but God bless you all. <laughs> Have a great Shabbat.